Luke chapter 17. I'm just going to kind of uh, piggyback off what my wife just sang about. And, and uh, it's something that I kind of felt direction to go in tonight, this morning in service. And uh, probably everybody in this house could lift their hand and say, you know what, I've been through storms. I've been through trials. I've been through circumstances. Uh, but I don't believe it's just the will of God to bring us through those trials. I don't believe he just wants to stop at getting us out of what we're going through. Uh, and, and that's what I want to talk about tonight in this house. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, everybody say one of them. One out of ten. When he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And Jesus said unto him, The one leper who went back, the one leper out of the ten who was not just satisfied being healed, the one leper who wasn't satisfied just getting out of his circumstance, he looks at that one leper out of ten and says, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He was already healed. God had already brought him out of his trouble. But he stepped into a dimension I want to talk to you about for a few moments this evening. I want to preach to you tonight about a dimension beyond healing. A dimension beyond healing. Amen. Why don't we give the Lord one more great hand clap in this house tonight? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing this evening. Ten men were diagnosed with what was considered to be the most feared and dreaded disease of Bible times. In fact, leprosy is still common in many countries even to this day. In fact, some 100 cases of leprosy are diagnosed in the United States on a yearly basis. It's often referred to as the oldest recorded or known disease. Leprosy in Bible times was a fatal disease which Jews supposed to be inflicted upon a person for the punishment of sin or as a sign that God was displeased with an individual's life. Leprosy was a painful, chronic, infectious disease characterized by visible sores and white shining spots. Leprosy would mutilate the body. It would deform the features and it would complicate the functions. It would cause severe nerve damage and weaken the muscles. It would twist and decay the limbs. But not only would leprosy infect its victims, but leprosy would also isolate them. Once you were pronounced to be a leper, you then had to live the remaining part of your life in a compound on the outside of the city or the camp. It was not by choice, but rather the requirements of the law of that day demanded such. Exiled and abandoned, these lepers were not only cut off from society, but they were not even allowed to approach the temple. Anything that these lepers touched was considered to be as unclean as the leper himself. So to prevent this disease from spreading, these lepers would cry, unclean, unclean, warning people not to come near them and not to touch them. Understand, leprosy was considered so revolting that these lepers were not allowed to come within six feet of another individual. And on the days that the winds were blowing, they had to stay at least 150 feet away from anybody else to try to keep the disease quarantined. But not only did their cry identify them but their appearance identified them as well. Lepers would wear torn garments. Their hair would go unkept. They would cover the lower part of their face. If you could see these lepers they would look wild and untamed and undomesticated. But if you could see beyond, 
that facade of disease, affliction, and pain. You would see men and women who are weary from the pain and weary from the isolation. And Brother Mathis, I'm not sure how it happened. I'm not sure who told these lepers in this passage of Scripture, but somebody in that leper colony found out that Jesus was about to pass nearby. And because of their disease, they kept their distance. But distance did not silence the voice of desperation. Because when you're desperate, you can't worry about what you're dealing with. When you're desperate, you can't worry about what you may look like. When you're desperate, you can't worry about what somebody else may think or say. The only thing that matters is Jesus is close by. And I've got to get the attention of the Master. And the Bible says Jesus came close enough. It did not matter how diseased or distanced they were. He, he went close enough so that their voices could get His attention. And I've come to tell somebody on a Sunday evening, it doesn't matter how far away from God you may feel. It doesn't matter what you're presently going through. I believe Jesus is going to pass by in this house. And if somebody can get desperate, desperation will stop God quicker than anything else. If God understands somebody's desperate in this house, He'll stop in His tracks because the lepers cried out, have mercy upon us. And Jesus stopped, looked at those lepers and said, go show yourselves to the priest. Imagine what a position to be in. Uh, imagine that you're one of these ten lepers. Uh, imagine thinking that Jesus doesn't lay his hands on you. Uh, he just looks at you uh, and says, go show yourselves to the priest. Uh, imagine as you're walking away uh, and there's no signs of changes or improvement. Uh, pain is still in your body. Uh, fever is still there. Uh, and your body members are still deteriorating. Uh, but how do you respond uh, when you get a word from God? Uh, when it contradicts your circumstance when what God says and what you see are so opposed one to the other it's very simple you've just got to do what God tells you to do you've got to move in a realm of faith and step out of a realm of common sense because we walk by faith and not by sight and the Bible says as they went they were cleansed fever began to subside their spots disappeared and the disease left as they went they were cleansed sometimes you've just got to move in faith and move on what you know and not what you see and not what you feel and the Bible says one of them when he realized he was healed turns back and with a loud voice glorifies and worships at the feet of Jesus watch what happens Jesus looks at this one leper this one man out of ten and says where there are not ten others where are the nine only this one has returned to give glory to God and Jesus looks at this one leper and says go your way your faith has made you whole he had already been healed. But this leper stepped into something else. Uh, understand what I'm preaching tonight. Uh, ten lepers were healed. Uh, virtue flowed through their bodies. Uh, healing. Uh, it was something so many before had experienced. Uh, and something so many after them would encounter. Uh, Jesus healed. Uh, the mother-in-law of Peter. Uh, it was the capitalist who was healed. Uh, the lame man of Bethesda was healed. Uh, uh, there's people all throughout the Bible uh, whom it tells us Jesus would heal the multitudes who stood in the crowd. What happened to these ten lepers was not something foreign or unknown but let me take it a step further and tell us that if healing was the best God could do if healing was the ceiling of what God wanted to give us then the story would have stopped after those lepers were healed so we've got to ask ourselves the question is there a place in God that goes beyond just being healed is there a dimension in God's presence that somebody can step into this house that goes beyond God just getting us out of our trouble understand my premise he healed those lepers he rescued them from their dilemma he brought them out of their trouble. He rescued them from their calamity. And how many in this house can testify that God has done the same thing? How many times has God brought us out of circumstances and brought us out of trouble only for us to stop? 
at the initial exodus. Ten lepers were healed. Ten lepers were brought out of their trouble. Ten lepers were brought out of their trial. But one leper out of ten realized that if he's God enough to heal me, if he's God enough to bring me out of this, then he's God enough to finish what he started. And that one leper went back. And because he was willing to go back again, he stepped into a dimension I've come to preach about in this house. There is a place in God that people can step in if you're not satisfied with God just bringing you out of your trouble I've come to challenge that mindset of the church tonight in gen the church in general uh, that God just wants to bring us through things no uh, he wants to do more than just bring you out of your trouble uh, he wants to do more than just bring you out of your storm uh, there is a place in God that we can go if we're not satisfied with just being healed so let me recap this and bring it together and see if I can make it make sense. Uh, let's go years down the road. After these lepers had this encounter with Jesus. Um, let's go years from this moment we read about. Uh, years down the road. Uh, and I can imagine those nine lepers as they come together for a reunion. Uh, and Brother Mathis, they express gratitude uh, that they're healed. Uh, they're happy that they're able to go back into society. Uh, they're happy that they can see their friends and their families. Uh, they can even go to the temple. Uh, even though the scars, uh, deformed fingers, uh, and misinterpreted tell their story they're just happy to be healed of leprosy but then their attention turns to that tenth leper and they notice there's something different about that man than there is about us you were not just healed but all of your fingers and toes have been restored you've got both ears you don't limp anymore you don't look like somebody that used to have leprosy there's something different about you than there is about us they realized uh, that this one leper stepped uh, into something they did not step into. Uh, understand, uh, all ten were healed. Uh, all ten made it out of their trouble and their trial. Uh, but this one leper stood out uh, above the rest. Uh, they realized uh, we were satisfied uh, just getting through the storm. Uh, but this one leper wasn't satisfied. Uh, he stepped into a dimension uh, that goes beyond being healed. Uh, that I've come to tell somebody about tonight. There's people in this house who have been through storms and trials and circumstances. And you may be in this house and it may look like you're still suffering from what you've been through. But I believe there's a place in God. He's going to open up for somebody in this house. If you're willing to go back one more time, stop drawing a line in the sand and convincing ourselves God just wants to bring us out of it. He wants to do more than just bring us out of our trouble. Uh, there is a place in God uh, that goes beyond being healed. Uh, I believe there's people in this house, uh, you've come through storms, uh, but there's no joy. Uh, you've come through trials, uh, but there's no peace. Uh, but I believe God's going to pass by in this house, uh, and there's a place beyond healing uh, that somebody can step into. Uh, what are you preaching about, preacher? Uh, I'm saying there's a dimension uh, that goes beyond God just bringing us through it. How many times have we prayed those prayers, God? If you can just bring me through this, uh, if I can just crawl my way out of this, uh, if I can just barely make it, no, uh, that's not the will of God uh, for His church and for His people. Uh, we need to get that prayer out of the church uh, that says, if I can just barely make it, no, uh, there's a place in God's glory uh, that goes beyond Him just bringing us out of our trouble. There's a dimension beyond healing. I'm come to not to tell us that the Bible says that that one leper went back and he was made completely whole. Nine were satisfied just being healed. But one stepped into a place called wholeness. That word whole in the Greek language that your New Testament is written in, it comes from the Greek word sozo. And that word literally means to be saved by a divine force or entity. It's the same word we use when we receive the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost saves us. And that's exactly what God done to this one leper. He encountered something in the Holy Ghost that those other nine lepers did not get because they were satisfied just coming through their storm. But can I 
tell us tonight uh, only God's presence, uh, only God's glory uh, can take us uh, and put us in a place called wholeness. Uh, but we've got to understand there's a place if we're willing to go back. That one leper could have walked away from church that day satisfied like all of those other lepers. I'm glad God brought me through it. I'm glad God brought me out of it. But he went back one more time. And I believe there's a place in God that we can step into if we're willing to go back one more time. Amen. Understand, Jesus looks at him. There, there's so much going on in these seven or eight verses that I don't have the time to preach it. Because Jesus looks at them, hears their cry of desperation, and says, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, if you know anything about the Old Testament, they can't go to the priest. Because they're Samaritans. Samaritans were not allowed to approach the priest. They were outsiders. They were Gentiles like we've talked about this morning. But Jesus says, go to the priest showing yourself that you've been cleansed. And as these ten are walking away, one of them realized, wait a minute, I'm not even allowed to go to the priest. I'm not a Jew. And so he realized, if I can't go to the high priest, I'll go to the real priest. I'll go back to Jesus. And the Bible said because he went back, he was made completely whole because there's power when you're touched a second time. I don't want to be satisfied with God just healing me when God's got wholeness he wants to give me I don't want God just to bring me through those storms of life that we all have to walk through but I want God to put me back where I was before the storm ever came that's what happens when you're not satisfied with just being healed but you go back and experience wholeness I've understood the physical aspect of the difference between healing and wholeness. 2005, my second or third last game of the year playing football. Tyler probably remembers this. Tore my ACL, my LCL, my MCL, and my meniscus. The doctor come in and told me what happened. I said, man, is there anything left to tear? And I remember Dr. Medias telling me, he said, man, if you're going to tear it, you might as well do it right. And what should have been an hour to an hour and a half surgery turned into almost four hours. Because after I came out of the surgery, he told me, he said, once I got into your knee, he said, the damage was so severe that there were, there were, there were broken up part, parts of your cartilage floating around in your bloodstream. And he said, if I did not take the time to get all of that out, uh, an infection could have set up and you could have lost your leg. But even though that was almost 14 years ago, uh, over time, my leg has healed itself. Three times a week, two hours a time, going to rehab for six months will do that. Almost 14 years later, my leg has healed itself. But here's the difference. Even though my leg has healed itself, I've still got two screws in my left knee. Even though my left leg has healed itself, there's still scars on my leg. Even though my leg has healed itself, one leg is still smaller than the other because there is a difference between being healed and being made whole. And how many times do we come to church and God brings us through things? God brings us out of things. We allow Him to heal us, but we never allow Him to make us whole. But I'm telling people in this house, God doesn't just want to bring us through things. He wants to put us back where we were before that storm ever came. Stop selling ourselves short. There's a place in God that's called wholeness. And when people hear our testimony of what's happened to us and where we've been and what we've gone through, they never believe it. Because you don't look like somebody that's been through all of that. That's what happens when you step into a place called wholeness. That was the difference between those nine lepers and that one. When people looked at those nine lepers, they knew there was a day you had leprosy. But they had no idea when they looked at that tenth leper. Why? Because God didn't just bring him out of it. He put him back where he was before leprosy ever came. How many times do we come out of things? 
How many times do we come out of circumstances and trials? Uh, but when people see us after the, sto after the storm, uh, the scars tell our story. Uh, how many times do we come through battles, but there's no joy? Uh, how many times do we come through trials, but there's no peace? Uh, how many times do we come through troubles of life, uh, but we're still limping and we're still bleeding? Uh, it's where Job found himself living. Uh, Job lost everything from his family to his finances. Uh, and in the book of Job, he begins to write and tell God, Oh, how I wish it was uh, the way it used to be. Uh, Job was saying, I remember a day uh, when everything was right uh, and everything was perfect. Uh, even though Job made it through the trial, uh, he still longed for the way it used to be. How many times do we feel the same exact way that Job did? I'm through the trouble. I'm out of the trial. I'm out of the dilemma. But it's still not like it used to be. How many times do we come to church and there's no joy? And there's no peace. And there's no happiness. But there's a place in God. It's amazing that one leper out of ten experienced wholeness. Could it be that only 10% of the church ever really encounter that place called wholeness? I don't believe it's the will of the God that we serve for us to barely make it. For us to limp our way to service after service. For us to crawl our way to service after service. There's a place in God that goes beyond just being healed. Wholeness. It's that dimension that those Hebrew boys encountered in the fire. Because the thing that's so great about that story is they go into the fire but when they come out of the other side, the Bible says their hair is not singed. Their clothes are not burned. In fact, they don't even smell like smoke. Because when you step into a dimension of wholeness, you can come out of a fire and not even smell like you've just come out of fire. Because God can put us back where we were before those storms ever came. Shipwrecked and snake bit. If being shipwrecked is not bad enough, Paul is snake bit by warming himself up by the fire. If it's not one thing, it's another. Anybody ever been there? I survived being shipwrecked. Now there's a viper hanging from my wrist. I mean, it's one thing after the other after the other. The Bible says that when Paul is bit by that viper, one translation says in the book of Acts that the men of that island, they watched and they waited for Paul to die. Because they know what happens when people get by, bit by that kind of viper. So and so got bit by that viper and they didn't make it too long. They watched and they waited for Paul to die. They already knew the end result. So and so got bit by that viper and they left the church. So-and-so went through that and they, they backslid. They walked away from God. I know what's going to happen. How many of us in this house have been through things like Paul had been through? And people look at you while you've got vipers hanging from your wrist. And while you just survived a shipwreck, people look at you and say they'll never last. They'll never make it. I know people that went through less and they didn't make it. How many people are in this house? People wrote you off and said they won't survive that. They won't make it through that. But you know the great thing about Paul is Paul just shook that viper off and he kept living for God because there's a place in God that he can put us in that when people see us they never guess you've been through what you've been through I don't want to just stop at being healed when God's got wholeness that's what makes the story of legion so great in my opinion you know the guy that's possessed with 6,000 devils we always like to preach legion pre-Jesus but we never preach legion post Jesus. I know it makes a good scenario because legions possessed with 6,000 devils. He lives among the tombstones. He cuts himself with rocks. He breaks chains. 
He runs new throughout all of the land. I mean, uh, it paints a very bad picture of somebody. Uh, but what I love about the story of Legion uh, is that when Jesus steps foot in the tomb, uh, he's at his feet worshiping. Uh, and the very next verse tells us that Legion, uh, this demoniac uh, who lives among dead things, who cuts himself, uh, the very next verse tells us uh, that he's clothed and sitting in his right mind. The great thing about that is God didn't just get the devils off his back. He said, I'm going to put you back where you were before the devil ever showed up. And there's people in this house tonight, you know what it's like for devils to show up. But I'm telling some people in this house, God's not just going to get the devil off your back. He's not just going to get you out of that trouble. He's going to put you back where you were before that storm ever came. If you're willing to go back again. My prayers have changed somewhat. I don't pray God just bring me through this. I say, God, when I get through this, I want to have the same joy I had before I ever went through it. I want to have the same peace that I had before I ever went through it. Because there's a place called wholeness if we're willing to go back. As they make their way to the music tonight, the last image that Mary Magdalene has of Jesus is him dying on the cross. He's on the cross. There's nails in his hands and there's nails in his feet. There's a crown of thorns on his head. This is the last image that is burned into the mind of Mary Magdalene. Calvary was such a grotesque scene that Josephus in his writings tells us that Jesus literally looked like a piece of hamburger meat on that cross. He said it was so grotesque that you could literally see his internal organs struggling just to keep him alive. That's how brutal and that's how violent Calvary was. And that's the last image Mary Magdalene has of Jesus. Suffering in agony dying slowly but surely. Three days pass. The Bible says Mary Magdalene is at the tomb of Jesus. And into the picture comes a man whom she believes is to be a gardener who's come to put flowers around the tomb of Jesus. But little does Mary Magdalene know is that the same man that stands before her was the same man that was dying on a cross just three days earlier. Now, the last image she has of Jesus is blood everywhere. Suffering and agony, dying, organs exposed. And the man that's in front of her at that same graveyard is the same man that was dying on that cross. But she could not recognize him because something happened in those three days. There was no more blood. There was no more agony. There was no more suffering. There was no more dying. And I believe there's people in this house tonight that if we could look spiritually tonight, I believe there'd be people on these pews that, that are bleeding because of some storms and some battles you've had to go through. But I believe after this service tonight, if we could look through the same lens of the Spirit tomorrow, we wouldn't even recognize the person standing in front of us. Because that's what God can do if we're not satisfied with Him just bringing us out of it. In my imagination, that's the greatest thing about the story of those lepers. Jesus was trying to establish a principle to everybody that will ever step foot in the church. I don't want to just bring you through your trouble. I don't want to just bring you out of your trials. I want to put you back where you were before those troubles and those trials ever showed up. So we stand all over this house tonight. They're about to play and they're about to sing. But I wonder if we could just lift our hands all tonight. And in your own way, why don't you just begin to talk to the Lord tonight? I'm about to turn them loose. They're about to do whatever they want to do. But I've just got a feeling there's some people in this house tonight who knows what it's like 
to go through storms. You know what it's like to go through hardships and trouble. And here you are. You're still here. You know, Brother Mathis, we could throw a party in the Spirit tonight because we're still here. There's a lot of people in this house that can lift their hand and say, you know, all the things I've been through, I'm still here. All the hell that I've had to go through, all the troubles, all the disappointments, all the setbacks, but I'm still here. But God doesn't just want us to stop at just still being here. He wants wholeness to come to every one of us. That's why the New Testament tells us that we are complete or we are whole in Him. When we allow Him to take us and put us into a place called wholeness, that joy and that happiness and that peace we once had comes back with it. So as they begin to play and sing, I, I just turn the service over to you, whatever you want to do. If you want to stay in your pews and pray, if you want to step out, come to the front and pray, it's entirely up to you. But I believe there's some hearts in this house that have connected to what the Lord is trying to tell us tonight. Come on, why don't we lift our hands one more time all over this house. And why don't we just allow that same presence that touched that leper to begin to touch us right now. There was a time when... Somebody just want to come to him tonight just by coming to the front or, you know, we, we, we want to gather in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can make you whole tonight. He can make you whole. Amen. Would there be one that would love to come? Let him do that. Let him do what he intended to do to start with. Hallelujah. I got to believe he had in his mind, Brother Adrian, that he could make every one of those men whole. But only one, only one came back to give him praise. Hallelujah. Anybody in the house want to come to the front? Hallelujah. Just come to the front and begin to worship him. I believe God can bring you whole while you're here worshiping. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray. Would you come? Would you come? Hallelujah. Thank I invite you to come to I invite you to come and just worship tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're hurt, you're scarred. You're disappointed. Hallelujah. You're lonely. You miss a loved one. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. God can restore. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Come to Jesus and lay your burdens down. Come to Jesus. Not tomorrow, Hallelujah. but right now. Come to Jesus. His arms are open wide. Come to Jesus. Yeah, the one who gave his life. I'm not going to direct you in what to do. You just open your heart to Him right now. If you want to wave your hands, if you want to walk back and forth, whatever, hallelujah. Hey. Jesus, His arms are open wide. Come to Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be whole tonight? Anybody want to be whole tonight? Jesus. Come to Jesus. 